we're through a lot of different emotions, including real anger, because our, our parents are always telling the girls not to cry, and they're always giving them chocolates and giving them sweets and giving them anything to prevent the tears. Uh, yeah, yeah. The distraction, and, and then we look at each other like, where do we take this? Like, well, where you take it is that both of you have a terror about grief. And your parents are demonstrating it. They, they parented you after all, so they're showing what they're showing to your girls what they did to you, you know. And the minute we say, no, let them cry, we've both been absolutely attacked and massively spirit attachment with the attack yeah. that we are, you know, what... Yeah. The, the and there's parents. your terror yeah. to your grief. Your terror to your grief is that if I allow myself to feel my grief, I'm going to get the rage of my parents. Yeah, the rage of our mothers particularly. Into, yeah, yeah, mothers in particular, females, for both yeah. of you, yeah, yeah. So, um, and the only other thing for yourself uh, to have a look at is this, um, uh, is this feeling that you have to do what the woman says, right? You've got this feeling inside of you that if, if the woman's unhappy, the whole family's unhappy, you have to do what the woman says. In fact, that's a saying, isn't it, that goes on quite frequently. And it's quite often very true, because, because if the woman's unhappy, she often makes sure everyone else is unhappy at the same time. So, so the key for you, again, there is this is all about the fear of your mother, the fear of your mother's rage, the fear of her control. I just started noticing that, because my mum will not... If she's down, everyone else has to, has to be right down. down with her. Yeah. Yeah. And that, if you're not, then she's just... Full self attack on her. Like yeah, because she also she, she'll either go into self attack of herself, so, so that you have to commiserate with her at some or point, attack my dad. or attack somebody else. Yeah, uh, for being unsupportive. Yeah, and the truth is that uh, that mothers like that create children who are so afraid to feel their grief that every time their grief begins to come up, they just the ch the child will go into terror. Uh, they know that if if they have an emotion, and there's a there's a really good book, the, the narcissistic mum book yep. that you, that helped you enough. a lot. Yeah. There's a uh, what's who's that by? Uh, Carol McBride. Yeah. Carol McBride. Uh, will I ever be good enough? It's for daughters of narcissistic mothers, but I feel it's probably okay for children of narcissistic mothers. So uh, let's define a narcissistic mother. A mother who is not able to understand that her ch their children have their own emotion. And the mother who wants the children to feel only their mother's emotion. And, uh, and to be frank, it's a very, very common <laughs> emotional injury in many mothers because many mothers have children just so that they share in mum's emotion. The, the, many mums even begin the process of having children for that own, only that reason. So my suggestion is have a read of that book. There's also a series of books by Alice Miller. Yeah, you've got those. Uh, have a good read of those books too, because that'll help you uh, detune from this connection that you both have with the mother and start to connect with your own emotions and allow your own emotions. You have a deep fear, and that's why when you're with your mothers, either one, the mothers will automatically prevent the grief of your own children because you're trying to prevent your own grief when you're with your own mothers as well. Because you're afraid. <coughs> you're afraid. The other day I was um, playing Guitar Hero and it was Fab's birthday and we were both, like he was on the drums and I was on the guitar, we were having an absolute ball. And then I didn't, wasn't making coffee for the guests and my mother literally stood right by my side, crossed her hands, didn't say a word but projected such like attack. I started sweating like it was go and be a host and attend to the attend to making coffee instead of having fun with my partner at his birthday but i started sweating and it went on for that long and i started literally like shaking and i just felt the, the worst attack i've ever felt because i've been and what did you say laura i didn't actually say anything yeah right <laughs> can you see see if you were really connected with yourself and not afraid of your mother you would have said mum what you're doing now is actually quite nasty. You're sitting there projecting at me, and she'll deny it, of course. You're sitting there, go, you can just say, go away. Go away, mum. You're, you're, you're causing me lots of discomfort, and I, and I want to do what I'm doing. 
but is, you... Is everyone nervously laughing? They're all like, oh, I can say that to mum. <laughs> How many of you would feel bad about saying that to your mother? <laughs> then you tell her, then now you you're being see? unloving. You are really angry. You actually now can leave my house. <laughs> And if I was in her house, I would just get up and leave and say, you're just far too unloving for me to be around. That's what I would do. Um, I would not compromise on it at all. I know that in that moment I was praying and feeling my emotions and, and holding my desire, but I know that nothing changed on a soul level because I didn't actually speak up and communicate. So my, my throat... You didn't embrace still... the situation. No. Yep. And yep. remember, I was talking to Elvira earlier about, like, step into yeah, the truth the, I, of the situation you know just that's the step that it's really hard to take and you need you know warm up sometimes to go oh i didn't do it okay yeah you you will probably shake you'll be oh, I will. the, the fact is angry. you were yeah. just shaking when she was doing this to oh, you yeah, <laughs> and, my, and i was playing yeah. the drums and i couldn't even do that with my leg because i was shaking that yeah. Much. yeah yeah and and so the key is to embrace that situation challenge this thing that is in your mother's and your mothers have actually are in quite dark condition they both believe they have should have total control of your life whenever they're around you and as a result of that unless that you challenge that when they're on earth here they're going to pass into the spirit world in a pretty bad place and and also not only that you've the way it, don't even just do it for them, but also do it for yourselves in the sense that unless you begin to speak up against oppressive behaviour, you will continue to respond in fear towards oppressive behaviour. Do, do you follow me? So it's not just about feeling the emotions. That can be a bit of a cop-out sometimes. Yes, certainly. A lot of people are not acting. You need to act in the most loving way. Now, the most loving way, if you've got a person barraging you with their rage or even their demand, the most loving thing to go to is say, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to respond to your demand. Huh? You might be going, I'm sorry. And then they can say, oh, I didn't have a demand. I'm sorry, but you did, and you just need to go away now. <laughs> if it was my house, I'd feel completely in my right to do that. If it was their house, I wouldn't do that. I'd say, I'm sorry, but I need to go away now. And I'd be out the door, right? Just, re just recently up at, we, you know how we've got all this God's way of love starting up and and it's quite interesting at times. Anyway, we had a group of people over for... Uh, they were helping us. We're, we're turning our house into an office. And, uh, and there were a heap of people helping us pack up all of our... Well, I'd call it rubbish, probably. Um, and putting yeah. it into, into a, a shipping container. And one lady came up to me with this bag of seeds. And she says to me... She hands them to me and says, I've got all these seeds that are really wonderful. And she starts explaining the seeds to me and what the wonderful things about the seeds are. And I'm going, no worries. And she's going, yeah, and it's really wonderful. What can I do with them? And the man next to me had actually already talked to her. He was the leader of the environment team standing next to me. And he'd said, actually, didn't we talk about this last week? <laughs> she said, yes. And I said, well, why do you now want to have the bag of seeds presented to me when you could have just gone up to the leader of the environment team, his name's Dennis, you could have just gone up to Dennis and given him the seeds, which you know he wants. Why did you have to make such a song and dance about it? All right. And then she started going, oh, well, it's because... Oh, and she started feeling and she goes, oh, I can feel I just want your approval and everything. I said, yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she left <laughs> straight away um, crying, but um, she felt very rejected. Now, was I rejecting her? No, I was actually denying her the addiction of getting my approval. That's what I was doing. That's not a rejection. That in fact, remember we said when you're at one with God, that's what you do 100% of the time. So, yeah. so I wasn't rejecting her. I was just in that place denying her addiction. She went away feeling rejected. So is that the right feeling for her to feel if she wants to get closer to God? Well, was it the truth of what was happening? It's not the truth of what was happening. I was not rejecting her. What was the truth? She doesn't want to feel the demand for the addiction being met. But instead of feeling that, 
she goes away feeling rejected. Interesting. Can you ever become at one with God by feeling an emotion that's not really there? I don't.